Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. All right, the name of the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh Bahasham. In the name of Yahweh Shai, the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahasham, in the name of Rachahakurash which the Holy Spirit sent from on high in these latter days in the form of the Comforter. And um, I wanted to do a, a brief lesson. I don't want to make this too long, uh, but just something to think about as pertaining to the doctrine of hell. All right, because you got a lot of Israelites who are waking up, you know, from Christianity, but then they want to bring particular doctrines. All right. And uh, mindsets from the Christian doctrine over to being an Israelite and it doesn't work that way you see because a lot of people are fixated that you know when you die either you go to heaven or hell when the scriptures say both <laughs> righteous and wicked all right the, the the spirits go back to the spirit world as a matter of fact this is a, the book of Ecclesiastes the third chapter in the 20th verse it says all go all right unto one place all are of the dust and turn to the dust again. All right. Uh, verse 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward into the earth. All right. So the spirit of man goes upward back to the most high. As a matter of fact. Let's get that in Ecclesiastes, the uh, 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And seven, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, because we all come from the dust. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. See, the spirits all return unto the most high when you pass away. As it says here, all go unto one place. All are of the dust and shall return to the dust again. All right. And it speaks on that in various scriptures. Okay. It says here, Abraham gave up the ghost in uh, Genesis 25 and 8. What does that mean? His spirit went back up to the heavenly father. He's no longer alive. Okay. Um, Job 10 and 9. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as the clay and will bring and wilt thou bring me again into the dust? All right. Meaning, you know, am I going to pass away? Job 34 and 15, all flesh shall perish together and man shall turn into dust. And when you turn into dust, what happens? Your spirit returns to the heavenly father. See <laughs> now the cycle of that is when you, when you go back up to the heavenly father, all right, Psalms 104 and 29, thy hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath. They die and they return to their dust. All right, their breath, that's the spirit, you see? And then it says, thou sendest forth thy spirit and they are created and thou renewest the face of the earth. So people have a problem with the cycle of life, all right? Because it makes too much sense to them. You know, the way that, you know, these Christians and these, these, these fake, you know, um, going back to the Greeks and these different ideologies that they all believed in as concerning death, you know, they believe in that over the Heavenly Father's way and cycle of life. Meaning when you pass away, your spirit returns unto him. But then that spirit, three and four generations down the line, as pertaining to the Holy Scriptures, returns to the earth. There is no scripture you can find where when a man dies, he either goes to heaven or hell. All, all right, righteous, wicked, whatever, those spirits return to the Heavenly Father, man. All right. In the in the in the best way, one of the, the, the best ways to deal with this or one of the best ways to deal with this, there's various ways is to uh, look at the kings of Judah, because when you look at the kings of Judah, including Saul, a lot of them, which Saul, he did, you know, he he, he dealt, dabbled into consulting a witch. All right. But it, it, it gets even worse as you go to Rehoboam and, and Jeroboam. OK, uh, which Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. He did evil, as you can see here. Abijam, he did evil. Jeroboam did evil. And when you deal with some of the acts of these men, it involved child sacrifice. 
sexual perversion. Now the scriptures say, all right, all right, that those sins are, you know, punishable by death. And when you go into this, and, and a lot of these were put to death. Some of them just died in their old age, but a lot of them were put to death, all right, for their wickedness. But ultimately, what you're going to find out is that all of them returned to the spirit world when they passed away. None of them went to hell. You see, nowhere in the scriptures do you go in prophecy, you know, even dealing with the heathen nations. All right. They're, they're still going to be alive. They're not going to be in a place called hell. Now they're going to be tormented. Hell is going to be put on them because when you deal in the scriptures, hell, let's get that in Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Hell is associated with catching hell on the earth. All right. And yeah, fire is coming to the earth. But, you know, but that fire isn't going to be underground real quick. Second Peter's three. To, all right. Second Peter chapter three. And ten, it says, but the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements sh shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also in the works therein shall be burned up. It's the earth that's going to be burned. You see, fire is coming to the earth via nuclear war. Okay. The chariots. You see, and it's going to be Babylon the Great that's going to be engulfed in fire completely. All right. But you're also going to have fire hit, you know, other parts of the earth, man. So dealing with hell, that's going to be hell, but it's going to be on earth. Let's get a quick example. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 5 and 13. Therefore, my people are going into captivity. We're in hell because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. Does this mean that they were burning? You can go to uh, Jonah with, in the belly of hell. He was in the belly of a fish. Was, was it fire there? No. David said, hell, all right, is, is, is all around me. It, com it compasseth about me. You know, meaning he was in some messed up situations. So hell have enlarged herself and it's associated with captivity and opened her mouth without measure in their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And, the, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. So when you see hell fire and these particular things in the scriptures, they're all symbolic. All right. Now, going back here to the chart of the kings, we know Saul did evil. What did Saul do? When you read uh, 1 uh, Samuel 28, he consulted a witch and he also tried to, you know, uh, uh, murder the Lord's beloved, which is David. OK, now, when you read this, he consulted a witch to, you know, get a hold of Samuel. And what did Samuel tell him? Basically, you, you're going to get put to death, which you can see that in a, a first Samuel, the 31st chapter, if you want to read it, him and his sons. But what did Samuel say? Because where was Samuel at this time? He was in the spirit world. Samuel returned to the spirit world. When, when Samuel died, what happened? His spirit returned unto the father who gave it, right? First Samuel 28 and 19. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hands of the Philistines. See? And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Now, where was Saul? I mean, you know, Saul was on the earth at this time. Now, where was Samuel? He was in the spiritual realm. Samuel told Saul and his sons, basically, y'all you, you, you and your sons are going to be with me. And the Lord shall also deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. So he was basically put to death. All right. When you read that in uh, the 31st chapter, 1 Samuel 31. But where did he go when he died? Did he go to hell because he did those wicked acts and his sons? No, he went back to the spirit world. Which goes directly with what's written in the book of Job, which we'll get that. Now, let's look. We're going to deal with Jeroboam, which we know Jeroboam got into some serious uh, 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 child sacrifice. All right. He even set up a, a, a new priesthood. He took away the priesthood. All right. Of the Levites. And he set up a wicked priesthood. Now, this is just a summary. It says 
Jeroboam. What the hell is this, man? All these damn ads, man. <clears throat> it says Jeroboam. Acting under God's direction led a rebellion against the evil king Rehoboam. Both of them were evil. The outcome was that Israel was divided. Jeroboam became the first king over a larger portion, still called Israel, and Rehoboam remained king over the smaller portion named Judah. After Rehoboam's tribe, now Rehoboam, <laughs> what was his tribe? Judah. Ironically, his mother was an Ammonite. I wonder how he's still Judah. Anyway, Jeroboam will forever be remembered as the king who caused Israel to sin. He became a prototype of an evil king. All right. Uh, uh, Fifteen latter kings were described as being evil, just like Jeroboam. It says, although God had promised Jeroboam a great and lasting dynasty, Jeroboam rejected God's promise. All right. In the way that nullified it in order to achieve political security, Jeroboam abolished the national worship of the Lord, which is the sacrifice, and replaced it with the worship of golden calf idols. These idols and the sins practiced in connection with their cult brought God's wrath. He put hell on them, ending Jeroboam's dynasty after only two generations. Jeroboam's legacy eventually caused the downfall of the kingdom of Israel as well. Said where to read his story, 1 Kings 11 and 25. Now let's just type in Jeroboam in the scriptures and see how he passed away. Or when he passed away, where did he go? Because some of them it tells you, you know, they, um, you know, he slept with his father. Some of them just say they died, you know. But let's, uh, let's, let's look it up. Yep. First Kings 14 and 20. In the days which Jeroboam reigned were two and 20 years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab, his son, reigned in his stead. So after all of that wickedness, you know, sexual immorality, taking away the priesthood, doing all of this wickedness, Jeroboam did what? He went and slept with his fathers. He went back to the spiritual realm. Why didn't he go to hell? Now, when we cut vocab with this, you know what he said? Well, there's a waiting room where the people who did wickedness are waiting in the spiritual realm. All right. Uh, 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 you know, waiting, you know, and they're being tormented and they're waiting on the final judgment. Then they're going to hell. Like, come on, man. The scriptures say the Lord's mercy endureth forever, man. <laughs> Now, yeah, according to the story, they had to be wicked, all right? And they're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven, according to what's written, all right? Because as a, as a matter of fact, let's get that. Matthew 5, because Jeroboam would fall under this, you know? Now, we don't know how the Lord is going to have it. You know, some of them may, you know, be put in a decent position. Who knows? But... When you read Matthew 5 and 19, speaking of the law, it says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do them and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, what in the hell does it mean that they're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven? Should Wouldn't someone who's teaching our people not to keep the commandments and not doing them, wouldn't they go to hell? No. It says simply that they're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. Now, when you look up this word least. Okay. Strong's G, 1646. Elachistas. Elachistas. Smallest size and size. An amount of management of affairs, meaning you're not going to be in that ruling, governing class and importance because you know under Yahweh Shai all right you have the 12 you know 144 and guess what they're in higher importance amongst the nation of Israel and that large multitude 
that's the order of the 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 that's the first fruits starting with you know uh Yahweh Shai and his governing body the tabernacle of David you see they're going to have the most in management of affairs in the kingdom of heaven under Yahweh Shai in importance all right uh, uh what is the least moment in authority of commandments meaning you're not going to be in a position of authority now all Israel will be righteous all Israel will be you know on a level but when it comes to the rank and order of that you know those who are doing all of this wickedness like polite you know Floyd Mayweather uh, 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 hey look at General Yohanna if he stays on that path what he's gonna do when he comes back in the kingdom of heaven because he will come back through the loins of the you know that remnant who's saved He'll be least in affairs, in authority. All right. It says in rank, in excellence of persons. You see? So it doesn't say that you're going to go to hell for doing this wickedness. You'll just be in the kingdom of heaven, least, all right, in affairs. You won't be of that higher hierarchy, all right, sitting at the table with Yahweh Shai, all right, uh, or you won't be on that first dominion. You're going to have to suffer a lot of them who are here. Hellfire, destruction, tormented. And who knows how the Heavenly Father is going to judge you? Because you could think, well, I'm just going to be put right to death. Well, the Lord can make that one moment, that three seconds feel like forever, man. You don't want to play with the Heavenly Father, man, because you got a lot of people with that mentality. Well, if they could just do wickedness, well, shit, they could just do wickedness and then still be in the kingdom. Well, the heathen are going to be in the kingdom. So how in the hell is it that the heathen are going to be there to witness a righteous rulership, but your own people who were all messed up and chosen and for the story of the... Because these spirits all belong to the Lord at the end of the day. He can do what the hell he want to do with them. He can do what he wants to do with them. I'll just say that out of respect. Let me so lock you. He can do what he wants to do with those spirits, man. He's the one who puts the spirit inside of man. Let's get that in Zechariah 12. And you all think that your wicked, all right, and, and, and defiled flesh, you have a better plan than the most high. Without reincarnation, without this way that we're speaking of, this cycle of life, nothing makes sense. Everything would just be scattered. How how were all of these Edomites who've done all of this wickedness and all of these great men who've done all of this righteousness and came on the earth and stood up for, for the heavenly father, how will they all get their judgments? <laughs> you see? As the scriptures say in the book of Sirach, all right, a man shall be known in his children. All right. Zechariah 12 and 1. The burden of the word of the Lord of is uh of Yahweh for Israel, saith Yahweh, which stretched forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. All right, even even before you're born in the flesh, there's a plan for you along with that spirit all right that he's given you your soul which is your intent your 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 responsibilities on the earth some for wicked purposes some for righteous purposes all right but they're all you know belong to the heavenly father and when you die your spirit goes back up to the heavenly father it doesn't go all right to heaven or hell everybody goes to the spiritual realm see heaven and hell in a sense, at the end of the day, are, are going to be play, played out on earth. See? Once the kingdom of heaven is set up, after the hell comes to this place. All right? Which is judgment. All right? Now, going back to this. It says, Jeroboam's rise to power. The prophet of Judah rebukes Jeroboam. So you can clearly see. Let's see here because there was a part where it talked about 15 other prophets Let's see that here we go 15 kings were described as being evil like Jeroboam it was a sinful legacy that led to Israel's eventual destruction all right <laughs> Nadab he did evil walked in the way of his father Jeroboam which dealt with a wicked priesthood. It was basically Christianity, worship of the calf. 
All right, but but Basha, Zimri, all right, Zimri, Omri. They, you know, I re remember the story of them wickedness. Ahab, we know damn sure Ahab with Jezebel, they did all sorts of wickedness, man. You know, they were they were basically you know the, the worshiping other the gods and idols, man. They were into all sorts of wickedness, child sacrifice. And you telling me a person who does child sacrifice, if there was a hell, they shouldn't be there? Well, let's look up Ahab and see how he died. Ahab. We know the story of Ahab and Jezebel, right? Let's see of his death. Yep. First Kings 22 and 40. So Ahab slept with his father's. And uh, ah ah Ahaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. So even Ahab went. Now let's read a little bit about the works of Ahab. Just to show you, but nobody's going to hell. Why ain't none of these kings go to hell? Why did they all, even after their wickedness, go up to the spiritual realm with the rest of their fathers? <laughs> Ahab is perhaps the most famous king of the separate kingdom of Israel, the son of the evil king Omri, Ahab became a pioneer and champion of evil. So why didn't he go to hell? Stop this goofy ass shit. Goodness gracious, man. It says, uh, not content with Jeroboam's golden calf coat, okay, Ahab sponsored Baal and Asher, all right, Ishtar, basically, which is a dual gendered God. All right. Introduced by his evil wife, Jezebel. Rituals of Baal and Asher of cults involve detestable practices, including prostitution. All right. Which is them temple harlots. Okay. Homosexual prostitution. All right. That's why in the law, the Lord said there should not be a, uh, a whore. And when you look up that word whore, all right, and, and sodomite. Is dealing with those temple prostitutes, man. And human sacrifice of children. So Ahab was involved, as well as a lot of these different kings, in human sacrifice, homosexuality, wickedness, right? And, and Elijah went face to face with his ass. But here it is. Ahab went and slept with his fathers. Why didn't Ahab go to hell? You want to know why? Because he went and slept with his fathers. All right, just like the rest of the wicked kings of Judah. All right, even the one woman, Athalia, who, who Jake had to put to death. She sat on the throne for a little while. See, Athalia. You see, and, and she went and slept with her fathers when she passed away. All right? Because everybody's at rest when they go to the spiritual realm. As is foretold here in the book of Job, Job chapter three and 12. Why did the knees prevent me or why the breast that I should suck? Meaning you were born as a child and when you're born, you know, you have an assignment. You know, you, you're nourished, you know, uh, by your mother to a point, you know, uh, then you grow up, you know, you're trained up in the ways of righteousness, you know, and then you have a job to do. <laughs> Job is like, why did I have to go through that? He said, for now, should I have lain still and been quiet, I should have slept. Then had I been at rest, if you didn't take me through this process. You see, now let's read this in the NLT and see what it says. Verse 13, had I died at birth, I would now be at peace. I would be at uh, asleep and at rest. You see, I would... Uh, rest with the kings all right with the world's kings and the prime ministers whose great buildings now lie in ruins see they're dead when they came on the earth they ruled they did particular things then they died they all return to the spiritual realm all right it says i would rest with the princes rich in gold whose palaces were filled with silver when they were on the earth why wasn't i buried like a stillborn child like a baby who never lives to see the light. <laughs> oh, man. For in death, the wicked cause no trouble. 
and the and the weary are at rest. See, the wicked cause no trouble, and the weary are at rest. Even the captives are at ease in death, with no guards to curse them. Rich and poor are both there, and the slave is free from his master. Where is this talking about? In the spiritual realm. Job said, if I had died, I'd be at rest with the rest of the people who are in the spiritual realm. All right. Waiting on their return to the earth. Because what does Job say also? If a man dies, shall he live again? I believe that's Job, the eighth chapter. Or Job, the 14th chapter. Job 8 and 9, for we are but of, but of yesterday and know nothing because our days upon the earth are a shadow. So we are but of yesterday, as the scriptures say, that which have been uh, named already. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 6 and 10. That which has been is named already and it is known that it is man. <laughs> Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. Meaning your your purpose is already written. <laughs> you see your outcome. You know those who are going to get the victory. Those who are going. It's already written. But that which has been has already is our that which is now has already been. Speaking of man in this case, now let's get Job fourteen. Job himself said he in his own with his own eyes shall see the Messiah return. Now in the 14th chapter, I'll start at 10. Job is just complaining about the hell he's catching. Now he says, but man dieth and wasted wasted away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? Right? His spirit returns to the spiritual realm. As the waters fell from the sea, as the flood decayeth and dryeth up. So man lieth down, meaning that particular man, all right, because as the scriptures say, it is appointed for a man to die once in that particular life. You see? And that was ultimately speaking of Yahawashai, all right, when you deal with that. But it says, so man lieth down and riseth not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. All right, he's like, damn, so you just catch hell and die. Now listen to what he says. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me to bring me back. You see, let's read this in the NLT. Verse 13, and then uh, we'll go right back. It says, I wish you would hide me in the grave and forget me until your anger has passed. But mark your calendar and think of me again. It says, can the dead live again? If so, this would give me hope through all my years of struggle. You see that? And I would eagerly await the release of death. You would call and I would answer and I would yearn and you would yearn for me. All right. Your handiwork. Now, let's read it here in the King James. Verse 13, O oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. Meaning he didn't want to live on the earth and suffer misery. You know, and then once your wrath is passed, remember me. <laughs> that thou wouldest appointed me a set time. Because here it is, you had men who suffered things and had righteous intent. Well, how are they going to get their blessing? Peter asked that. Peter said, we have forsaken all. <laughs> what, what are we going to have in, you know, in, in exchange? We've given up families. We've given up houses. We've given up things and we're following you. Well, the Lord said in the regeneration, when a son of man shall sit on his throne, you also shall sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's going to be fulfilled when the kingdom is set up. Those exact spirits will be placed there. Let's get that in Revelation 12. I mean, uh, 21. Revelation, the 21st chapter, when, it's, when the tabernacle of David is described, New Jerusalem, it has the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, and it has the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. As New Jerusalem comes down from earth, the 12 apostles of the Lamb 
will take their rank and have their order under the Messiah. And who's the, the head disciple is Peter, who asked that question. You see, so Job here is saying, you know, of the hell he's catching down. You know, then he asked, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee and thou will have a desire to the work of my hands. You see? Now, yes, you do live again. And Job understood that as he spoke of he's going to see his redeemer in his own flesh. And when Yahawashah returns, there's going to be some serious judgment. But don't you know that there's still going to be people on earth? Let's get that in Revelation the ninth chapter. Revelation, the ninth chapter, and the 20th verse. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues of nuclear fire and all of the hell that's coming on the earth, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and of silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, Neither repent the day of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their uh, fornication, nor of their thefts. They're, they're still going to be in a proud state. So why aren't these people in hell? See, they're going to be hiding in those bunkers. Right? Revelation, the sixth chapter. Revelation 6 and 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men. This is after the destruction. And the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the rocks in the, of the mountains, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For great is the day of his wrath, for the great day of his wrath is coming. Who shall be able to stand? So they're going to be hiding in the rocks. They're, they're going to not repent. They're going to be proud. Why aren't they in hell? These are things that don't make sense when you teach the hell doctrine. Now, this is uh, Matthew 23, because everybody pays. Now, Matthew 23 and 33 says, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Now, let's look at this word hell real quick. Ke'ena, all right? which is the Valley of Hinnom. It says, Hell is the place of a future punishment called Ga'ana, or Ga'ana of fire. This was originally the Valley of Hinnom, south of Jerusalem, where the filth and dead animals of the city were cast out and burned. All right, a fit symbol of the wicked and their future destruction. And the, and the destruction is going to take place on the earth. You see? So he's using hell. He's speaking of, this is slang. You see? Hell could also mean the grave. All right. But it, it, it was in, in the time of the Greeks and the Romans associated with the God of the underworld. You see, that's where you get this devil with a pitchfork waiting on you to come down. All right. And, 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 and be tortured and tormented forever and ever and ever, man. Matthew 23 and 34. All right. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and, and, and wise men and scribes and some of you and some of them ye shall kill and crucify and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth. You're going to pay from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias and Bacarius, whom ye slew between the temple at the altar. Verily, I say unto you, all these things shall come up on this generation, because that's how the Lord judges by generations, man. All right. As a matter of fact, let's get Jeremiah 32 and 18. Or is it 18 and 32? Yep. Jeremiah 32 and 18. Thou showest love kindness unto the thousand and recompenses the iniquity of the father into the bosom of their children after them. All right. <laughs> The great, the mighty, the God, the Lord of hosts is his name. So you eventually will pay through your children. All right. So you have a seed of the righteous 
and you have a seed of the wicked. Now, when you get the book of, oh, there goes my bird, in Shalom. Shalom, <laughs> my favorite bird. All right, he's gonna return to me in the kingdom. All right, because animals, plants, everything has spirits. All right, now, um, this is, uh, what am I looking for? Lost my thought. The book of, uh, oh, Sirach 44. Speaking of these famous men, the leaders of Israel, right? All right. Let us now praise famous men. All right. 144. <laughs> this is chat. This is verse one of chapter 44. How spiritual is that? The Lord have wrought great glory by them through the great uh, through his great power from the beginning. All right. These are the leaders of the people right now. As you read down. Verse 11, it says with their seed shall continually remain a good inheritance and their children are within the covenant. That's the generation of the righteous. Their seed standeth fast and their children for their sakes. That's how we are going to be uh, coming to that promise, man. We're continuing that legacy. Their seed, all right, shall remain forever and their glory shall not be blotted out. Their bodies are buried in peace, but their name liveth forevermore. So their seed shall never be blotted out. So they're going to receive of the reward through their seed, all right, which some of them are returned unto the earth, all right, to be heirs to the promise that's promised unto them for the righteous. But the same thing goes for the wicked. They're going to receive a wicked reward through the heavenly father and his son. You see? That's how the Lord judges, man. As a matter of fact, going to that uh, point in Exodus 20 and 5, thou shalt not bow thyself down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You see? So you pay, all right, generations on down the line, man. We're raised up. In our father's stead, all right, even some of us may be some of those men who actually we read about, who followed particular of those men we read about, who knows, right? But we're here to receive our reward, man. Let's finish it off here. Nobody's in hell, man. <laughs> Revelation 11 in 18, the, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, all right? And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and the dead are ultimately the heathen nations and two-thirds of our people. All right, we're the only ones that are in life. Life is symbolic of the wisdom, the breath of life that comes from on high. These heathen nations are dead and two thirds of our people are dead and they're going to receive judgment. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets and to the saints and to them that fear thy name, small and great. So there's particular women who follow Yahweh Shah, who cried after him when he was being crucified. Right. Some of those same women are back here today supporting the prophets. You see. Hell, you may have followed a particular prophet personally, and now you, you're back on the planet Earth. You, you, you listen to his videos more than you listen to others. That happens. This is a great family reunion happening, but you have the generation of the righteous, or you have the generation of the wicked amongst the nation of Israel, man, and they all play their part. And they're all going to be judged according to their works when Yahweh Shah returns, man. It says, and now uh, should have destroyed them, all right, which destroyed the earth. So I'm going to leave it there. You know, at the end of the day, when you uh, go to these kings of uh, Israel, look at some of their works. Look at the, the, the ones who did evil, which you can, um, you can get that here. Look at the kings of Israel and the ones who did evil. How were they able to rest with their fathers? How were they able to go back to the spirit war? How was Saul and his sons 
able to go uh, uh, rest where Samuel was. Because all go to one place, man. I just wanted to speak on that real quick. Uh, we could have got some more examples of different kings, but we'll leave it there. Hopefully I'll edify it. On to the next one. Shalom.